And I was here a lot of more time. Sister Amanda would have been working in the office back then. And I can still remember I got a phone call. I got a phone call from uh, a pastor at one of the, uh, another church in, in the state. And um, I guess he heard of, I had a reputation. Uh, and uh, we were going through a tough time. And I didn't know if I was going to make it. And so we, we talked a little while, and um, he uh, uh, then, then he got to a point where he, he said he was actually looking because he was looking for someone to sign on with him. i got to tell you, it was tempting. What's this? Anybody who wants a job with benefits? It was tempting. Bigger church? thought about it, you know, and, and then we had some more conversation, and he talked about, you know, how things were going here, and, um, you know, and then, you know, our attendance, and, and some other things that were happening, and um, as soon as I told him the, the number of people that we had, uh, it's like things changed, well, send me your resume, things like that, so I, I obliged, but you know what, I didn't hear anything, I, I didn't get, I didn't have any call, I didn't get any callbacks, but I, all the time, this just happened. I'm thinking, you know, well, you know what? He's, he's going to call soon. And after a week or so, I decided that, you know what? He's probably busy. Because I know how pastors get. We, we get busy. Um, every day, I would look at the mail. I would expect an email. I expect a phone call. Now, you hear what I'm telling you? I was thinking I was done. I've had enough. And I'm seeing a way out. And I believe what happens is every every time a door is closed, God opens a window, and I, I was right here, you know, and I and I and I was praying, Lord, is this the window? Is this the window? Maybe I can't see the window. I, I don't know what's going on. Finally, a month month has passed, and a second month has passed, and my frustrations have turned into despair. And some of you have been here long enough. You've been here the whole time I've been here, and you never saw any of this. seeing it today. You're hearing about it today. I'm being honest. Listen, if, if, if a guy, if a man can't tell you how he's dealing with things, perhaps it's because he can't trust you with what he's dealing with. I'm glad I'm here today. But I tell you, I tell you, all face line and said, every day is just sunshine. And I suppose even this message today is kind of timely because of the things for the last three weeks, but, you know, maybe this last month that we've gone through, and, you know, we, uh, people that were acquainted with, with their children being murdered, and someone else, uh, someone dies unexpectedly, and, and we, we find out, there's all sorts of things going on, and this midweek, I told you, I, I, I shared with the people who come on midweek, I said, listen, I, there are things that I'm aware of that you have no clue, and you might want to thank God for that right now. It's a rough world we live in, amen? And I appreciate something that I'm getting right now from most of you this morning. This. Do you know that's what keeps the man and woman of God going? That's what keeps the people of God going. Is when we, we're having this connection. When we have this relationship. And we can actually share with one another. We, we don't totally. I mean we, we, we depend upon the spirit. Somebody say amen. We're the church of God. We depend on the spirit of God. But once in a while we need to speak with our mouths. We need to share with one another. But I got to a point, and I got to tell you, and, and to this day, I, I got to a point, and this is a man that I knew, I, that I was acquainted with, I respected, but this is a man that I, I have to say I, I thought I loved, but um, I, I can still remember that day. I, I came in one day, there was no mail, there was no phone call, no return calls, nothing. I'm, I'm upset, and I'm thinking, who does he think he is treating me like that? Maybe I pastored a small church, but I never asked him to call me to begin with. Are you, wait, wait, nobody ever has arguments like that with me, right? <laughs> I mean, that was, that was, that was his, his idea. I didn't ask him to call and to try to recruit me and, and promise a, a bright future. I didn't ask him who was he that said, listen, I'll get back in touch with you, and he never did. And, 
That truth was kind of hard to face. He wasn't going to write. He wasn't going to call. He wasn't going to talk to me at all. You know, I kind of got a little bit depressed. It's kind of hard to stay depressed when you got so much you need to get done, you know? Nobody wants to see Eeyore in the, in, the, in the pulpit. Some of you don't even know who Eeyore is. But. I mean, here's the thing. Even if he had decided that I, I wasn't fit, I wasn't qualified, he could at least call me. I, I at least deserved a courtesy call. Debbie might only remember this. Because I, I hadn't shared too much with her, but one of the I did share with her, she tried to encourage me. But that wasn't the kind of thing that I could share with anybody else at that time like I'm sharing with you now. First off, it, it, it would have been too embarrassing. Not to mention at that time, and even today, I, I, could I really say, hey, listen, I got this call, I'm thinking, no, wait. Just so you know, I haven't had a call in, in a long time, but well, I'm telling you, those people make promises. Even good people make promises. And maybe they don't keep them. Maybe they say they call you, but they don't. Or, 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 or people indeed, uh, uh, they, they, they intend to stay in touch, but soon they forgot. Things happen. People ask for help, and then they never say thanks. People tell stories about you, and then they deny you to your face. And people will fail us all the time a million different ways. People are, I have an opportunity for failures. People are people, and we all fail in many ways. And we overlook it when we do it. But when we're shocked that someone else, especially somebody we thought that we could depend upon, turns out to be human, oh my goodness. So months had passed, and I hadn't heard anything. Um, and eventually I got over the disappointment, but the anger kind of stayed with me for a long time. It was, but this so you know, it was, it was that low level sort of anger. You know what I just kind of carry right down here? Every once in a while I say, oh yeah. Then I, then I go, I gotta go get busy and just get, you know, get on with the day. But, but looking back, I'm amazed that um, my wife had stayed so positive, maybe because she wasn't totally aware. Well, I swallowed my self pity and beneath it all was this deep reservoir of self-doubt. Now I began to doubt myself. Wait a minute. Apparently it was still eating away on the inside. That whole episode made me wonder about my long-term prospects as leading in the church, as being a pastor. Perhaps I had been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And that was even worse than that residual anger that I felt. Oh, come on. You've done the same thing a thousand times, haven't you? I mean, that turning point came, though, uh, at kind of unexpectedly. One afternoon, uh, Debbie and I, had, had, uh, we'd gone to a, one of the dollar stores around here to do something. She was shopping, and uh, though I can't remember the name of the store, and even right now, as I'm thinking, I can't even clearly picture myself going up and down the aisles. But Debbie was shopping, and I was I just, I was just looking at the shelves. And, of course, I was still thinking to myself about what had happened months earlier, maybe even a year or so, for about the 5,000th time. I was replaying it in my mind. My mind was wandering, and I kept dredging this thing up. But in that dollar store, I remember along the aisle that the God of heaven and earth had spoke to me. Right there in the dollar store. I can't remember if it was Dollar General. There had to be Family Dollar because there was no Dollar General. It doesn't matter. I was in a dollar store. And I'm just kind of looking at the shelves, not shopping for anything in particular, making sure I keep Debbie in sight because, you know, I don't want to get left behind. <laughs> And I can still remember, just like right now, standing here. Tony, wake up. You've been stewing about this for far too long. 